So it's almost the end of winter, uh, we're a couple of weeks away, but uh, that's the official end. This week, the or at least next week, the temperatures look set to rise back above freezing. A lot of this white stuff around us here will melt, so I thought it's as good a time as any to do a winter review, look at some of the uh, numbers we have for things like efficiency, range, energy usage, and general performance over the winter. So at the end of a pretty mild winter by most comparisons in recent years, but uh, going out here in Greater Boston in a wintry mix of sleet and melting snow. So we've had a couple of storms come through the last week, but basically this is as good a time as any to take a look at the numbers that we've seen this winter, see how the Bolt EV has fared, look at range, look at energy usage, even look at a bit of performance. So let's dive into the numbers and see what we got this winter. Okay, so these numbers represent our winter uh, energy usage. We haven't recharged to full since uh, December 22nd, so this is everything that we've done over the last two and a half plus months. So, driving and accessories, 83% of all the energy we've consumed, climate settings, 12%, and battery conditioning, 5%. So the battery conditioning is the battery heater in the car and the battery management system using the uh, heater to keep the the battery at a temperature safe temperature um, it's not as aggressive as I might have hoped but uh, it's at least saving you the energy there the climate settings is obviously using the heat in the car um, but also for us preconditioning because we don't have the level 2 charger at home so it's not drawing from the um, the wall it's drawing from the actual car's battery and then driving and accessories as you'd expect that's the uh, just regular everyday driving through the winter so once I actually dug into the numbers here I realized that the onboard computer seemed to have them incorrect so these are the actual numbers from the my Chevy app with 2378 miles driven 793 kilowatt hours used uh, that breaks down to 658 kilowatt hours for driving and accessories, 95 kilowatt hours for climate control, and 40 kilowatt hours for the battery conditioning. So for me it breaks down into three categories. There's uh, obviously the range that we've got, what we've been seeing on a weekly basis in our local driving and on the longer road trips, um, how much the uh, energy usage has been impacted by uh, using the heater and the battery trying to keep itself at a, at a good temperature and then also the car's general performance obviously in the winter. Certainly here in uh, Greater Boston you'll get the snow, ice, much more rain, so there's uh, more challenging conditions on the road and those are the, the things that I wanted to look at quickly in this review. In terms of range we're seeing the cold temperatures bring us down to about 180 miles per full charge which works out to about a 25% loss in range over the winter months. That's with temperatures in Greater Boston being around 32 degrees or below, so freezing um, and the battery obviously taking the hit from that cold. In terms of efficiency, we've seen as low as 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour when we've really been blasting the climate controls and the heat, but more often than not it's been around three miles per kilowatt hour which is taking you up to 180 miles per full charge that we talked about before and that's about 25 percent loss which is about what you'd expect for an electric car in the gas car you're going to get similar um, maybe around as low as 12 15 percent but you're still going to see that range loss in winter less efficient use of fuel so it's not uh, dramatic at least for us with our lower drive speeds and some of the conditions that we've seen then as far as driving goes, the winter hasn't actually been that bad here in Boston. The uh, snowstorms have been infrequent, certainly compared to last year. We haven't needed winter tires or anything that would be more sticky and have a hit on the range. So we are on the stock original tires, low rolling resistance. 
So everything has been pretty good. I mean, the low center of gravity on the bolt with the battery in the base helps uh, keep you on the road a little more firmly. Um, you have some traction issues as with anything. If you're on those low rolling resistance tires, it's not so easy to get the grip. That'll be the case even in uh, dry weather. So when you get slick ice or rain, um, that starts to become a bit more of a challenge, but it's really been, a, you know, it's a good driving experience even in the, the winter months here. And I would probably, at least in this kind of winter, take the tires as they are rather than trade the range in the... I know there are certainly some folks who would prefer to be on Blizzax or the Nokians for winter driving, and that may be the case for further up into the mountains in New England or other locations where you're going to get a lot of snow more regularly. But uh, we really haven't seen the need. The uh, streets get ploughed relatively well. So we've been very happy with the performance in general. Occasional traction issues aside, everything has handled really well and handled the Boston winter this year nicely.